We had some business leaders in front of us today. One in particular said, you know, the rules for jelly beans. He manufactures jelly beans. The rules for jelly bean contents are different in Canada and the United States. They have to maintain two separate inventories. Is the sovereignty of Canada going to fall apart if we standardize the jelly bean? You know, I don't think so. Maybe Mr. Dion thinks so, but I don't think so. So, you know, there are, th these are pragmatic, practical discussions. In fact, it was my predecessor uh, in the Liberal Party who initiated them. What we try to do is simply to meet, talk about our common problems and see what we can do in practical terms in order to improve the lives of our people. Uh, whether it's to standardize the parameters for chocolates or medicines. Uh, I think these are common sense. You guys don't belong here. You guys don't even know what you're doing. You don't even know what you're involved with here. Stand up for yourself. How about you stand up for Canada, guys? Despite denial after denial, the story that Canada, the U.S. and Mexico are planning to build a NAFTA superhighway is getting an awful lot of airtime. Critics say when North American leaders get together to talk about the Security and Prosperity Partnership, or SPP, behind closed doors they're hatching plans for superhighways, common currencies, customs unions. A couple of my opposition leaders have speculated on massive water diversions and uh, uh, super highways to the continent, maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. Manitoba is also taking a major role in the development of a mid-continent trade corridor, connecting our northern port of Churchill with trade markets throughout the central U.S. and Mexico. To advance the concept, an alliance has been built with business leaders and state and city governments spanning the entire length of the corridor. When fully developed, the trade route will incorporate an inland port in Winnipeg with pre-clearance for international shipping. Uh, super highways to the continent, maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. Human Events magazine recently had this description. It said the North American Super Corridor Coalition is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to developing this international integrated multimodal transportation system along the international mid-continent trade and transportation corridor. The Security and Prosperity Partnership has 19 working groups looking at hugely diverse areas under security coming up with the equivalent biometric standards for passports, visas, and resident cards for all three countries, sharing terrorist watch lists, cooperating in the detention and removal of illegal migrants. Conspiracy. Starting in June of 2009, there's, a, there's an enhanced requirement at the border that requires people to either have a passport or, in this case, an enhanced license so they can get across the border. And then they'll get this license that has a chip in, in it, a computer chip, so that you can use it at the border. I'm amused. On June 1st, 2009, new document requirements will make getting home from Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean, by land or sea, more efficient. Now isn't that beautiful, America? Learn more about the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative at GetYouHome.gov. McKenna, a former ambassador, Canadian ambassador to the United States, brought up the question that starting next week, it's a very sad week for Canada because we'll need passports to cross that border. 200 years of history wiped out. And he really laid it out for these two presidents. I was interested to see what their response would be. Believe it or not, neither George Bush nor Bill Clinton knew that starting next week, you needed passports to go back and forth between Canada and the United States. Two presidents who have been in charge of that country for 16 years didn't even know that that was the case. It was stunning to see the level of ignorance, perhaps, uh, of not just them, but of Americans and what's going on. 
Uh, so, you know, when we get all worked up about it, when I say to Janet Napolitano what's going on, uh, the response that we're getting back from them isn't so much, I think, an aggressive response. It's one that they just really don't know. It's quite comical, actually, when you realize the difference between reality and what some people are talking on TV about. Yesterday, we concluded an agreement on integrated cross-border maritime law enforcement operations, commonly referred to as Shiprider. Shiprider will allow both countries to police our shared maritime border together. By joining together with the United States, we will be better positioned to crack down on crime taking place in our shared water waterways, like the smuggling of illegal drugs, tobacco contraband, and guns. And no longer will criminals be able to rely on an imaginary legal line in the water to escape the long arm of law enforcement. Under prosperity, finding compatible standards for cars and auto parts, further development of the tar sands, and coming up with common food safety standards. In many cases, Canada has stricter limits on pesticide use than in the United States. The Americans see that as a trade barrier to their fruits and vegetables being sold here. So talks going on right now are to change Canada's regulations. In other words, we could soon be buying fruits and vegetables with higher amounts of pesticide residue from the United States. If we were to go the route, as uh, Michael suggested, of harmonizing regulations between the two countries in order to avoid the hassle of checking on things at the border, we are going to give up our sovereignty in some very important areas around security issues, around immigration issues, around regulatory harmonization issues, things where Canadians in many cases have a valid reason to do things differently than the Americans. Some of the things we do differently may not have a valid reason. There's some very specific regulations about issues like the strength of seat belts on motor cars, which it's hard to see what the Canadian shtick on it all is. But there's many other areas, think of security rights and immigration rights, where we passionately want to do things differently than the Americans. And if we go down the route of saying in order to facilitate commerce, commerce that hasn't necessarily benefited us uh, in the way that it could have or should have, and we're going to give up these things instead, we absolutely are compromising our sovereignty. We're talking about 300 different areas where they're essentially a lowering of regulatory standards. There is a frenzy on privatizing everything and anything that we own. The ultimate goal, uh, quite obviously, is to create such tight integration that uh, effectively we only have one North American uh, political uh, security military and economic place that there really are no no differentials uh, between this country and the country next door. Here we have Canadian military leaders actually proposing, recommending uh, that uh, the Canadian and U.S. governments take an incremental approach to an integration so as not to signal to ordinary Canadians that their sovereignty was gradually being given away. The other striking difference about the Cancun summit was the presence of some of the richest and most powerful men and women on the continent. Leaders of international blockbusters like Walmart, Home Depot, Lockheed Martin and Canada's Power Corporation. President GM Canada, Vice President General Motors Corporation. Uh, good morning, Dave O'Reilly, uh, CEO of Chevron Corporation. Rick Wall, President, Chief Executive, Scotiabank. I want to thank the CEOs and the, the business leaders from the three countries who are here. I thought we had a very constructive discussion about ways to make sure that there's harmonization between our, between our industries. And this is a bipartisan move. Republicans and Democrats alike, all expecting campaign contributions from multinational corporations. We've had here so far a Bush-Clinton advanced plan to take the North American Free Trade Agreement and advance it into the Security Prosperity Partnership. And we say if we do not stop it, we'll soon be at a North American common market, followed by a North American community, followed by a North American union. The leaders of Canada, the United States, and Mexico will issue emphatic denials, but their hidden motive propelling them in creating the Security and Prosperity Partnership is to advance one step closer to the centuries-old goal of a world government known as the New World Order. Is the sovereignty of Canada going to fall apart if we standardize the jelly bean? You know, I don't think so. Maybe Mr. Dion thinks so, but I don't think so. And the United States supports Canadian investments 
that have been made to exercise its sovereignty. 